Good morning friends, uh, we meet again for my last session for shear force and bending moment. To start with a new topic, first of all I have just revised what we had done in our last lecture. In the last lecture we had studied what is shear force, what is bending moment. Shear force is nothing but the unbalanced vertical force which is acting either to right or to the left of the section. It is basically measured to determine where the maximum shear force is acting on the beam. Bending moment, we had studied the difference between moment and bending moment. Moment is basically the product of force and perpendicular distance and it tries to rotate the body whereas bending moment is the algebraic sum of the moment of forces acting either to right or left of the section and the bending moment produces bending in the beam. We had uh, calculated shear force and bending moment, then we had studied how to represent this bending moment and shear force along the cross section of a beam. So, if the loading is basically a point load then in shear force we draw a vertical line, in bending moment we do not draw anything. If there is no load between two sections then we draw a horizontal line in shear force and an inclined line in bending moment. If the loading is a uniformly distributed load then in bending moment we draw a curve whereas in shear force we draw a uh, inclined line. Similarly, if we have got a couple moment then in couple moment as it is a moment in shear force we do not draw anything but in case of bending moment we have to draw a vertical line. Also we had derived a relationship between shear force and bending moment and we had solved 2 to 3 numericals based on that. Now today I am going to take a topic that is called as point of contraflexure. Right? So basically point of contraflexure is a point at which the bending moment value is 0. So I am going to take a numerical in which we get a point of contraflexure and based on that we will find out how to locate this point of contraflexure where the bending moment value is 0. Also one more important thing is uh, the point of contraflexure has got 2 to 3 names it is also called as point of virtual hinge, it is also called as point of inflection. So whenever the point where the bending moment value is 0 then at that particular point then at that particular point the it is called as point of contraflexure or point of virtual hinge or point of inflection. So I am taking one problem based on overhanging beam you can see over here that we have got an overhanging beam. The beam is uh, subjected to 30 kilo Newton meter UDL and a point load at the free end. We have to find out the point of contraflexure. Now to locate the point of contraflexure our first step is to calculate the shear force bending moment and to calculate shear force and bending moment we have to calculate the support reaction. So the first step is to calculate support reactions. Now how to calculate support reactions? So to calculate support reactions we have to apply our conditions of equilibrium that is sigma h is equal to 0 sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma moment is equal to 0. right? Now if you see over here at support A we have got a hinge support. So at hinge support we have got two reactions that is vertical reaction VA and horizontal reaction HA. Similarly at support B we have got a roller support. So at roller support we will have only one reaction and that is vertical reaction VB. Right? Now I will apply our condition of equilibrium. So the first condition is sigma h is equal to 0. We can see that there is no horizontal load acting on the structure. So we can say that h a value that is equal to 0. Now we will apply our second condition of equilibrium that is sigma v is equal to 0. Now for sigma v is equal to 0 algebraic summation of vertical forces. If the forces in the vertical downward direction positive, if the forces acting in the vertical upper direction we will take it as positive and in the downward direction we will take it as negative. So we start with first 20, it is acting in the downward direction, so it will be minus 20. Second is reaction VB in the vertical upper direction, so positive. Third is a UDL in terms of intensity, so I have to take a concentrated load, so to convert it into concentrated load, if the UDL is acting for 3 meters span we will multiply with 3 that will give us a concentrated load. So concentrated load is 30 into 3 that is 90 and a vertical reaction in the upper direction VA, so plus VA that is equal to 0. 
So, we get an equation that is V A plus V B that is equal to 90 plus 20 that is equal to 110 kilo Newtons. So, this is our first equation. Now, we apply our third equation that is sigma moment is equal to 0. Now, when we are applying sigma moment is equal to 0, moment is always taken either at support A or at support B or at point free and C. Suppose we take moment about A, so moment about A again algebraic sum, so clockwise moment will be taken as positive and anti clockwise moment will be taken as negative. So, to start with first is 20 kilo Newtons. So, 20 into what is the distance? 3, 3, 6, 6 plus 2, 8 and its movement is in the clockwise direction. So, it will be taken as positive. Second is reaction VB. We are taking moment about point A. So, what is the distance up to line of action? 3 plus 3, 6. So, VB into 6 and it is moving in the anti clockwise direction. So, it will be taken as negative. Then the third is 30 kilo Newton per meter. So, we convert it in terms of point load. So, 30 into 30 that is a concentrated load this is called as force and what will be the distance? This concentrated load acts at the center. So, the center for the 3 will be 1.5 and it is rotating in which direction? So, it will try to rotate in clockwise direction. So, it will be taken as positive. So, that is positive equal to 0. So, from this equation we get the value of V B and V B value we get it as V B is equal to 49.167. So, 49.167 kilo Newtons is the value of V B. We substitute the value of V B in our equation 1. So, we get V A is equal to 110 kilo Newtons minus 49.167 kilo Newtons. So, we get the value of V A equal to 110 minus 49 that is 60.833, 60.833 kilo Newtons, right. So, our first step of calculating the support reaction is over. Now, as both the values obtained are positive, we do not have to change the signs and we have to write the value over here. So, V A that is equal to 60.833 and V B value that is equal to 49.167. Now, our second step is to calculate the shear force values. So, calculate shear force values. So, I am instead of whole shear force, I am writing SF, right. Now, just I will remind you that what we had done in the last lecture that if there is a point load, we have to take shear force value just at right, just at left, okay. And if we have got a UDL, so beginning of the UDL and end of the UDL, we can calculate the value either from right side or from the left side. We will take it always from the right side, okay. So, to start with shear force at point C. Now, C is a point load. So, I have to calculate the shear force at point C just right. So, from point C just right, I will draw one line put my hand on the side and see on the right side. Is there any force acting on the right side? There is no force acting on the right side. So, the value will be equal to 0. Then we come to shear force at point C just left. So, on the left side of the point C just left, I will draw one line, put my hand on that particular section and see on the right side. How many forces acting? Only 20 kilo Newton and that 20 kilo Newton is trying to push the beam or the right side in the downward direction. So, shear force is taken as positive. So, plus 20 kilo Newtons. Then shear force at point B, again B is a point load. So, just right and just left. So, we draw one line on just right, put your hand on that particular line and see on the right side. On the right side, there is only one 20 kilo Newton force and that 20 kilo Newton force is trying to push the right portion in the vertical downward direction. So, shear force is taken as positive. So, 20 kilo Newton force. Then we come to shear force at point B just left. So, at left side we will draw one line and put your hand on that particular line. Now, see on the right side of the section how many forces are there? Two force. First is 20 kilo Newton, 
it is trying to push in the downward direction, so positive. Second is VB in the vertical upper direction, so it is trying to push the right portion in the upward direction, it will be taken as negative. So, plus 20 minus 49.167. So, the value of shear force at point B is 29.167. So, 29.167 kilo newtons positive or negative, so it is negative, so minus. Then we come to shear force at point D. Now, you can see at point D there is no point load, right. So, we do not have to calculate just right, just left, directly put your hand on the point D and see on the right side, same forces are there. So, I can directly write down minus 29.167. Then shear force at point A. Now, you can see A is again a point load, right. So, at point A, I will calculate just right and just left. So, on the right side, we will put our hand and see on the right side how many forces are there? 1, 2, and UDL, right. So, what we will get? Minus 29.167 and UDL in the right downward direction. So, positive 30 into 3, right. So, you will get the value as plus 60.833 kilo newtons and shear force at point A just left. So, at just left, we will draw a line over here. So, how many forces are there at point A just left? 20 positive, VB negative, UDL positive and VA negative. So, the net will be equal to what? 0, right. Now, after calculating the value of shear force, we have to draw a shear force diagram. So, to draw a shear force diagram, we have to take all the points in the vertical downward direction, where we have calculated the value of shear force. Then we have to draw a baseline. So, baseline is nothing but a reference line and its value is 0. Then we have to see what are the maximum positive and negative value. You can see that the maximum negative value is 29.167. So, we can say this is 10, 20 and 30 and maximum positive value that is 60.833. So, we can say 20, 40 and 60. This will be 20, 40 and 60. Over here this is 10, 20, 30, right. Now, we start drawing our diagram. So, to start with first is shear force at point C just to write 0. So, at point C the value is 0. So, at baseline. Then shear force at point C just left plus 20 plus 20. So, I have to go at the upward of the baseline. It is a point load. So, we have to draw a vertical line. Then shear force at point B just right again 20 positive. So, at point B we will go 20 upwards. That is no load between B and C. So, we have to draw a horizontal line. Then shear force at point B just left minus 29.16. So, minus 29.16, we have to go below the baseline. So, 29.16 somewhere over here at point B and what type of load is acting? Support reaction is also a point load. So, we will represent a vertical line. Then shear force at point D, it is minus 29.167. So, minus 29.167 there is no load acting between section B and section D. So, we have to draw a horizontal line. Shear force at point A just write positive 60. So, positive 60 somewhere over here. What is acting? Uniformly distributed load. So, we have to draw a inclined line. So, we can draw a inclined line and shear force at point A just left 0. So, at point A 0 and as it is a point load, so vertical line. We have to show the confinement of area where the shear force is acting, show positive and negative. If the 
diagram is below the baseline negative, diagram is above the baseline positive, then write down the ordinates. So, the first ordinate is 20, second ordinate is also 20, third ordinate is 29.167, again 29.167 and the last ordinate is 60.83 and write over here shear force diagram. Is this diagram complete? Something is left out. What is left out? You have to locate the point where the shear force value is 0, right. So, we can see over here that the shear force value is 0. So, I do not know at what particular distance the value is 0. So, what we will do? We will assume that this distance is equal to x. Now, which distance I have to take? So, you will observe that the portion A D is subjected to what? U D L and you all know that when it is a uniformly distributed load that means the load is distributed uniformly per meter length, right. That means I can assume that the two triangles formed in between A D is similar triangle. So, I can say that this is my triangle 1 and this is my triangle 2. If this is the x distance, what will be this distance? This distance will be equal to 3 minus x. Now, if I want to find out the value of x that is the point where my shear force value is 0, I can equate both the triangles. So, we can say that triangle 1 that is equal to triangle 2. So, the vertical ordinate of triangle 1 that is 60.833 upon horizontal ordinate that is 3 minus x is equal to vertical ordinate of triangle 2 that is 29.167 upon horizontal ordinate that is x. So, now you can get the value of x. So, we get x that is equal to we get the value of x that is equal to 1.072 meters. So, x that is equal to 1.072 meters. What is the importance of calculating this value of x? The importance of calculating this value of x is because we know that where the shear force value is 0 at that particular